Hello and welcome to another episode of In Case You Missed It. The Women's World Cup qualifiers are in full swing and to ensure that you are up to speed and don't miss a beat, we're making it our point of duty to speak to the teams competing around the Caribbean. As it stands, Guyana and Trinidad and Tobago are locked in battle in Group F. Last week, we caught up with a member of the Women's Ahsoka Warriors. Today, we head to Guyana, where skipper Kayla D'Souza will reflect on her team's World Cup qualifying campaign so far and to look ahead to the upcoming fixtures. Welcome, Kayla. Good afternoon. How are things? How has the World Cup qualifying been for you so far? So I think just getting the team back together um, with the addition of new talent, um, some new players, some new faces, is already a win in our books. Um, and then receiving six points in the first round is just a bonus and it puts us in a really solid position as we move forward to the next second round where we will face Trinidad and Nicaragua. Yeah, you were born in Canada, but you chose to represent Guyana. What brought about that decision and how difficult was it? So. Even though I was born in Canada, I'm able to represent Guyana because my father's side is Guyanese. Yeah. Um, it's funny because people do ask, you know, if you were able to play for Canada or Italy and they were to come up to you and say, hey, come join the team, what would I do? Um, I wouldn't change this decision for the world. Um, representing a nation at a world stage definitely is an incredible achievement, no matter who you play for or who you represent. But repping Guyana specifically is another level of special because um, not only am I representing my family, but I'm representing a nation that truly deserves recognition. Um, and we've we've made that very clear over the last, uh, you know, 10 years uh, playing at the international level, but I'm also playing a larger role in advocating for young girls and women in football, uh, not just in Guyana, which is very important, but also globally. So it's a very, very big deal. Um, doing this. Definitely a big deal and a huge role to take on. So Kayla, can you tell us a bit about, you know, what's the mood like in the camp, you know, especially after those two wins? Yeah, so I mean, coming on top of the group uh, was our main priority as any team would be. Um, you know, in order to progress into the summer, we need to come top of our group. Um, so only the first, the first team will advance. Um, so really getting those two wins puts us in a great position. Uh, before our next two matches. The, you know, you never want to be catching up and relying on other teams' results to put you through. Um, so it's really, you know, we kind of have our own fate uh, made up for us uh, as we move into the second games. But our success has definitely created a positive energy with everybody from players to staff. Um, so it's just really hoping that we can continue this momentum as we move forward. Yeah. Um, and I think just everyone is looking forward to stepping onto the pitch as we prepare uh, moving forward uh, next month. Yeah, if you had to just pinpoint something, you know, that's very special about working with these group of ladies, what would you say to me? Yeah, I think um, what's so beautiful about our group is as much as we are all Guyanese, um, we don't all necessarily reside in Canada, uh, in Guyana. Some of us reside in Canada, US and the UK. Um, and just coming together, um, as much as, again, we all live in different spots, we, we come together based on our, our roots and our traditions um, about being Guyanese. And I think the thing that really sets our team apart from others is our team cohesion. Um, honestly, this team really feels like family. Even after one trip and getting in, having a new player join in, we're all just so comfortable. Um, and I think it's really important for us to have this um, team cohesion because it translates onto the field. Um, and success in winning teams do have close knit and uh, cohesive environments. And I think that's something that, that runs strong within our program. Yeah, and definitely you have been re reaping the rewards because of that closeness. You're drawn in Group F, Trinidad, very close to you. You both have the same number of points, six. Which team would you say has been your most difficult opponent so far? Um, I think both games provided both uh, different challenges. Um, we had an opportunity to play a lot of girls to see what was working, what wasn't. So hopefully from those two games, we'll be able to uh, pull from the game tape and really shape our, our training camp before we face Nicaragua and Trinidad um, and be able to figure out what our strengths and weaknesses. Um, and also we know we know what we've been able to see Trinidad and, and Nicaragua play. So how can we, you know, set ourselves up for success, knowing um, what those teams potentially can present? Um, because Trinidad is definitely a, 
we've played them in the past. They've always been a phenomenal, uh, phenomenal matches, great competition. Um, so we know that moving into that game will be very difficult. Um, and we need to do all that we can to prepare ourselves um, if we want to come out first in our group. Yeah, leading Group F is definitely commendable, but just two games and you have more to go. Do you think, based on what you've seen from your teammates, can the Lady Jags keep this up? I think anything can happen. Um, and just based on our camp and our last round, I really think that we can move forward. Um, this is probably being with the team since 2009. I have to say this is definitely one of the strongest groups that have been participating in these competitions. Uh, not only do we have a strong 11, but we have depth on our bench, which adds to our ability to win um, and look to advance for sure. Right. So when competition resumes in April, you face Nicaragua. What's the approach as you get ready for this game? Um, maybe tactically, you know, mentally without giving away too much. Yeah, um, it's going to be a tough match. Uh, Nicaragua went in beating Turks and Caicos 14-0, um, looking to rank up uh, their goals for, which is really important in a competition like this. You know, all we can do really at this point um, that we can control as players and as staff is to continue to train um, while we're apart from each other, work on our fitness, and really ensure that our bodies are injury-free heading into the second round. Yeah. And having a training camp that will allow us to be technically and tactically sound before we kick off against Nicaragua. So really using that week to prepare us as a, a cohesive unit. Yeah, and I think that, you know, it's a good time now for me to ask you about your coach. How has that been, you know, that experience working under coach Ivan Joseph? Yeah, so playing under coach Ivan Joseph as well as the rest of the staff has been an absolute pleasure. Um, you know, all the coaches bring something different to the team and the program. And I think it adds to our success. Um, Ivan in particular, though, has been extremely instrumental in our U20 program um, successes over the last, uh, well, they also played this past month, but in previous uh, tournament rounds, as well as our senior team. So he does go the extra mile um, to ensure that we have what we need to be successful. So if that means that, you know, the pool of players in Toronto get together and get a little mini camp in uh, before we do head down, uh, just provides that extra opportunity for us to be successful um, and, and be able to play with one another. Um, he is big on team cohesion, so just having him um, really foster that and have a positive team culture is, is huge. Um, and again, it just all reflects onto the field and it will really determine our success moving forward. Yeah, I know it's been a short period of time, but personally, do you, you, do you find that he's been able to help you improve on anything personally on your game and whatnot since you've been working with him? Yeah, definitely. Um, as much as I've been announced captain, he's he's given me feedback on how to lead and, and things to improve on and things that I'm I'm doing quite well at. Um, and, you know, being able to set the example for uh, not just my teammates, for, but also for the younger generation of girls that come through, um, you know, as well as me being a coach um, here at home and having the opportunity to be on the U20 coaching staff um, in their previous competition in 2019. He, you know, I was able to learn a lot from him as a coach um, as well, and I can translate that and hopefully be able to carry that um, with me as I move forward as a coach, um, you know, following my, my playing career, hopefully down the road. Yeah, I know you mentioned inspiring the younger ladies, and what I noticed is, you know, there aren't many native Guyanese youngsters playing on the team. Do you think if you go on, you know, to have a very successful World Cup qualifying campaign, that the youngsters looking on, the young Guyanese girls, can, you know, feel as if they, they can understand what y'all are doing and just get themselves involved in playing football? Totally. Um, it makes a huge difference just for them to see, um, you know, other women playing for their own country, right? Um, they have something to look forward to and work towards and be inspired. You know, it's like the young Argentinian boys looking up to Messi um, and saying, I want to be just like him and have that opportunity. Um, so we're hoping to inspire that generation. Since we first started in 2009, um, we've seen the youth programming in Guyana get significantly better. Um, you know, to the point where some of the local girls have received scholarships and had opportunities to go and play in the States. So it just goes to show that what we're doing already is making a difference. And I think it will only continue to go up from here um, to inspire more kids and get them playing um, and, and provide more opportunities like scholarships and, and potentially pro, pro opportunities for these players as yeah. they grow. 
definitely keep up the good work. Well, anything you may want to say to the people of Guyana who continue to support your team game after game and they want to see you qualify for the World Cup, maybe even win? Yeah, I mean, I think it's just, you know, thanking all of the supporters and um, those that follow us very closely. You know, there's nothing like having, um, you know, playing in front of a group of, of people that support you. Um, you know, playing in Guyana in front of our, at home is probably one of my most favorite things to do. Um, you know, I prefer that in, instead of going to away games. There's nothing like having the support of uh, not only a group of football followers, but just a nation behind you. So continue supporting your, your Lady Jags. Well, Kayla, it has been a pleasure and thank you so much for joining us on In Case You Missed It. Best of luck in the rest of your football campaign. Thanks for having me. No problem. Well, viewers, that's a wrap for this week's In Case You Missed It. Be sure to like, share and comment and let me know if the Lady Jags can qualify for next year's World Cup. Take care. Goodbye for now.